space programs continue to evolve. Just last week, it was announced that researchers have found evidence of a new planet. In 1969, Apollo 11 was the first space flight that put Neil Armstrong on the moon. He took man's very first steps. Since that time, study in outer space took on a whole new meaning. And Dr. Steve Lee with the Denver Museum of Nature and Science is hosting 60 Minutes in Space tomorrow night. And we're glad for you to come here and give us a sneak peek. Welcome. Well, thank you, Denise. Talk about the, your thoughts of the latest planet discovery. That's exciting. Well, first of all, we haven't discovered a planet. We've discovered uh. the gravitational effects of another planet. And uh, people... Put that in layman's terms. Okay. What does that mean? Um, we, for about the last 20 years, we've found some objects that are beyond the orbit of Pluto. And it turns out when you track the orbits of these, they all line up in a particular way. So that makes yeah. you think there's a planet. It's circling yeah. another planet. And so there's uh, some computer models that have been done saying that if there's a planet farther out than Pluto, farther out than these other planets, that weighs, has a mass of something between one and ten times the size of the Earth, oh, so it's called a super-Earth, oh that goodness. would be sufficient to explain the That's alignment amazing. of these orbits. Gosh, so, I can't wait to find out more. That's going to be a wonderful day in history when we do find that out. Speaking of history, there's a significant date coming up to America's space shuttle program. In 1986, we're having the anniversary here of the space shuttle flight that actually blew up. Right. It's the uh, anniversary of the Challenger mm -hmm. accident on the 28th. And actually, the 28th is what's called NASA's Day of Remembrance. Uh, there's actually three anniversaries. In 1967, on the, I think the 26th of January, was the Apollo 1 fire. This was as we were preparing the Apollo missions to the moon. We mm -hmm. lost three astronauts on the launch pad. And then in uh, 1986, the Challenger accident, February 1st of uh, 2003 Goodness. is when the Columbia accident happened. So yeah. they Significant commemorate dates. all of those. And it, it shows, you know, it, it's a hard thing to do to explore space, and people put their lives on the line to do it. They truly do, and I'm so happy that at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, you're offering 60 Minutes in Space. Why do you think it's important to have something like this? There's lots of news stories, like the Planet Nine that we mm -hmm. talked about. People see a headline, they see maybe a paragraph about it. There's a lot more detail that uh, you need just to even uh, have, a, have a feel for, uh, for what these stories are. So uh, once a month at the museum, typically the last Wednesday of every month, we have 60 Minutes in Space, where uh, one or two of our space scientists goes through the significant news stories of the previous month. We get really killer visuals. It's in our planetarium. and uh, I can't wait. I love, I'm so interested in space. I mean, not to the point to where I've educated myself, of course, like you have, but it's just, there's something intriguing about it. Is this a family-friendly event? Like, at what age is this suitable for? It's very family-friendly. Uh, I'd say children beyond the age of about first grade. Oh, it perfect. It would be appropriate for, all the way up to you know, 90 year olds, and we have that full spread. Yes. What's really exciting is uh, there's some kids that have been coming for the last 15 years, and they started as grade schoolers. They may, may be the next Dr. Lee right. that's out there, right? And how is 60 Minutes in Space interactive? Well, we choose every month its, uh, its new topics, and uh, we sort of allow the audience to, to lead us into how deeply they want to discuss this. We've got lots and lots of time for question and answers, and so we can uh, we can answer any of the things that are on the tips of people's tongues that they don't quite understand from what we've presented. And okay, I'm going to put you to the test right now. We have a picture, and it looks like it's just wide open space. What is this? This is actually Mount Sharp on Mars. Uh, this is where uh, the Curiosity rover has been driving for about the last two and a half, uh, three years. And uh, the thing you see here is all these wonderful layers in the rocks. Mm -hmm. To a geologist, that's a history book. The older rocks are on the bottom of that mountain. As you climb up through the different layers, you see younger and younger rocks. So by uh, studying this and climbing up the, the foothills of this mountain, we're going to be able to discover the history of this location. If on there Mars. was any water, if there's right. another species perhaps that lived there at one well, time. We already know that there was water. We yes. definitively found the evidence. Which means that. there's other organisms probably. Well, not necessarily, oh. but it means that the conditions could have supported 
Look bacteria. at me jumping to conclusions. CET is real, people. <laughs> Do you believe in aliens? I know uh, I'm putting you to the okay, test. Okay, I, I believe that almost certainly there's life. Uh -huh. elsewhere in the universe. There's, I do too. Uh, we've discovered just in a small patch of sky about 2,000 planets around other stars. Some of them are going to have conditions similar to just the like Earth. Just like us. And uh, I think it's entirely possible that you have bacteria, maybe you have more advanced organisms. Isn't that interesting? All right, we have another picture I want to show and you wanted to share this. These are three very important astronauts. So this was the what was called Expedition 44 and 45. This was a, a crew of three astronauts that were launched to the International Space Station last July. And the gentleman on the left is Chell Lindgren. He uh, spent a lot of time in Colorado, graduated from the Air Force Academy, Colorado State University, the CU Medical School. Goodness. And the, our museum has had a great relationship with him. Uh, when he launched from Russia in July, about 150 of his friends and family came into the museum so they could wow. see it. Um, in October, he spent 45 minutes with us with a live link to school kids. There were about 2,000 school kids who were able to ask him questions live on the space station. What a wonderful, and, uh, accomplished man. Right, he'll be so coming nice. back uh, in June. To, he will? He, well, he's on, he landed from the space station right before Christmas, okay. and he'll be coming back to the museum in June. So, so we'll have a chance to meet him and we'll see him in person. To Wonderful. Hear his experiences. We have another picture I want to look at real quick and and talk about the the purpose. This is a rover. Right. This is Curiosity, which we talked about a minute ago, and it's uh, about the size of a Mini Cooper automobile. It's actually uh, powered by a plutonium uh, battery, so it's nuclear powered, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's, it's really a robot geochemist, so it can drive across the surface of Mars, it can reach out, drill holes, pick up the samples, determine what they're made of. It's returned several hundred thousand high quality images. And this is just a taste of what you're going to see tomorrow night. Thank you, sir, for giving us a glimpse. You are fascinating Thank to talk you. to. Again, you head to outer space tomorrow night at 7 p.m. at Denver Museum of Nature and Science. 60 Minutes in Space is a free program with Dr. Steve Lee. Go behind the stories in space science, and you can learn so much more about all the educational programs offered. Again, the website is dmns.org, dmns.org. Org. Also, just a quick reminder, the current international exhibition of Sherlock Holmes ends this month on January 31st.